the British occupation to follow would be bittersweet. They would both help and harm the Egyptian way of life. Some public works, such as the Aswan Dam, would be completed, which controlled flooding and aided in crop irrigation. Yet, many Egyptians lost government jobs, and they were forced to pay high taxes. They occupied Egypt for many years until Great Britain, amid protests and uprisings, was forced to declare Egypt's independence in 1922. Yet, there remained a complicated influence of power over the Egyptian monarchy by the British until a military coup ousted the monarchy in 1953 and Mohammed Nahib became Egypt's first president. Egypt became completely independent of Great Britain in 1956 under President Gamal Abdel Nasser as the Suez Canal was nationalized. It was under the third president, Anwar Sadat, that Egypt would first have relations with the United States. In the 1970s, the U.S. was still in a Cold War with the USSR. In 1972, Sadat had taken the side of the U.S. and expelled all Soviet advisors from Egypt. The next year, Egypt was at war again with Israel over the Sinai Peninsula. Israel had taken it in the Six Days War in 1967. Egypt was now trying to regain it. Both the U.S. and the USSR intervened. The U.S. would convince Egypt to cease fighting. In turn, a peace agreement was reached by all parties, returning the peninsula to Egypt in a temporary peace to the Middle East. Since 1953, Egypt has been ruled as a democratic republic, yet many contend it is a democracy only in name. The current president, Hosni Mubarak, has been president since 1981, often running in elections unopposed. There are opposition groups now who have more freedom than ever before to protest hereditary and selective succession of power. Two of these groups are the Tomorrow Party and the Egyptian Movement for Change. Many people on the street, both Muslim and Christian, conservative and liberal, feel that change toward a more democratically elected leader is inevitable.